Kilbehny is a small village. It was once on the main Cork Dublin Road, which it no longer is since the motorway has come in. Bypassing Kilbehny has been a huge benefit to Kilbehny insofar as it has brought it back into being a village that you can actually cross the road now without being mown down. Um, it's quite a tight-knit little village. Now there's not many young people living in the village itself, but it's the hinterland, it's a huge hinterland, and it's a very tight, close, well-knit community. The, the hall, since it was built in 1973, has been the focus of the village. There's only two pubs, the post office and the village. That's all. The community centre here is vitally important to all the groups. Um, every night of the week there's actually some activity taking place within the hall. Um, even since we've put on the extension to the hall, it means that we have a couple of different activities going on. You have the ICA, you have badminton, you have Irish dancing. And since the hall has been opened newly, we have a lot more activities taking place for kids during the day. In so far as we have drama during the day, there's arts and crafts take place, there's a mother and toddler group. It's a huge link to the community. Small Town Studio is an opportunity to get local communities to get projects up and going. Um, I emigrated to Canada two years ago and when you have that bit of distance between you and here, I felt that the, there was good things about Ireland that were being overlooked and that the country may have been broke but it wasn't really broken and that if you look at community events and so on in Ireland they work really well and at a local level we, we, we excel at it. So there's always, no matter what is happening in the world, there'll still be someone doing under 12's GAA on a Saturday morning and there'll still be someone organising a local table quiz. And I felt that there was a way that we could tap into that and help the communities realise projects that may have laid dormant because of lack of funds or maybe lack of direction or so on. So Small Town Studio came about as a way of gathering together a group of architects that could help with these small community builds. We work with design build projects and where we go from project managing and the entire design inception that would come from ideas that they have and work with the communities in both an advisory capacity and actually delivering the final built product. Um, so we work through as a, as a community engagement workshop and the community are quite engaged in what's happening here and they've been with us through the whole way, um, meeting and talking about their ideas and what's happening here in the centre. When we got uh, funding from the City of Culture, we decided not to reinvent the wheel, so we went to Ballyhara. They seem to have a very good knowledge at local level of how this area works and the communities there. And we asked them to approach the communities and perhaps see who'd be interested. We got 16 applications of community projects. Six of them were very strong and we met with each and every committee group and, and talk through the projects. On talking through actually what we found was the scope of the application was quite narrow. When we spoke to them about their vision and their communities it was huge and very ambitious and uh, surprisingly adventurous I suppose and that excited us. Um, Kilvenny uh, we found that they were a very uh, roll up your sleeves type of group they just got on with things, they didn't wait or <laughs> they didn't, they just got on with stuff and we felt there was an energy here that we could tap into that would um, be useful for the project. I do feel they liked our group insofar as that we were able to say, right, okay, when the group comes, yeah, we'll house them in our family houses, we'll organise areas for them to work in and we'll organise a house for them. So I think the interview process as well as a very, very good application swung it for us. So we were delighted to get them on board at that stage. We had two different briefs. We have what the community wants from it and also what the students and the volunteers need to, to get from it too. So I guess from the, the community side of things, they had their hall built uh, successfully. They don't owe any money on it. But the downside of, of that build is they still haven't finished a lot of things. So in their mind, there was there were issues that needed attention like the acoustics in the main hall, a performance area, the mountable stage, signage as well, just the finishing touches that weren't completed and we felt that's fine, we can do that. From the student side of it we wanted to make sure that they had 
an autonomy in terms of the designing and ownership of what they do. We also wanted to make sure that their designs came out of consultation with the community group, not in working in a silo <laughs> on their own in a sort of, I want this, that they understood how they were facilitating the community. And I suppose for the past few weeks, we've been trying to meld the two of them together so that we end up with the, the project we have now. The process of recruiting the volunteers was just in order to get the information out there. We sent out some emails and we sent out information through our website and through um, Schools of Architecture and the Irish Architecture Foundation. And that was able to reach a lot of architecture students and we also sent it out through other design colleges and universities as well in order to get it just to a multidisciplinary group, um, young people all around Ireland who'd come down and do this project. I got involved through the college up in Dublin. Uh, I was sent an email um, at, towards the end of the semester and it was just, I guess, looking for anyone really, not necessarily architecture students, but anyone who wanted to get involved with the project. And it was appealing to me. I liked the idea of coming down here and uh, being hands-on and physically building stuff instead of just uh, working in an office for the summer. There's so little real building in college, like there's the practical side of things which is the making of models or even if you put a lot of effort into a drawing you can consider that making as well. But to actually build a scale of 1 to 1 rather than 1 to 100 or 1 to 10, it gives you a different perspective. I suppose in one way it's like having your dreams realised um, because all of a sudden what's in your head exists and is a physical thing and it's great and you, f you make it and you then have to, there's a whole other level of having to figure it out then. Like however well you might think you have it worked out in a piece of paper, you have to go and figure it out a hundred more times to get it just right. It's rewarding after having spent so long not getting any of your designs realised to be able to learn in the way that you make stuff. You can see what, when you've designed something that what it actually looks like in real life, not what you imagine it to be look like. So it's, it's nice and then you're coming down and you're helping a community to move forwards and do something. So that's kind of nice too. I got involved in this, I suppose, because in my own community, and uh, my own village, there is in fact very little sense of a community um, and very little sense of a community spirit. So I was really interested in seeing how much this work that we do could affect this community and maybe contribute to that feeling of community spirit and then hopefully I would take the best parts of that and bring it back to my own community back at home. What attracted me to Small Town Studio was the belief that um, architecture is for communities both in cities and outside of cities rather than what people would perceive to be architectural which is mostly in cities. I, I don't even think you can put a, a number on, on how valuable volunteers are and I have incredible admiration for the fact that the guys selflessly come here and tirelessly work, like, I mean they were putting in 12 hour days on someone else's community, on someone else's build and you have to admire that and their sense of social duty and the fact that design and architecture should encompass that and that the idea of making something better is actually a physical thing. You can write something better, you can draw something better, but to actually roll up your sleeves and, and try and bring that into your life and your work and your design should be applauded. And the guys have it in abundance. Not once have I heard a gripe, not once have I heard them kind of complain about it. Maybe they have that, but I haven't heard it. Um, so really, I have to, I, I do really, really admire them that they've done this in, the, in their spare time. James, I think, was saying that, you know, it's it, there's something nice about going to somebody else's place and going, yeah, we'll tidy up your village a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was that element to it, you know, they were just kind of coming in, making things a little bit better and then moving on. But, yeah, they were incredible. We hope as well that it's been kind of important for them, for experience-wise, and get, getting getting some design and build experience all, all in the one and working with communities. A lot of them wouldn't have worked much on group projects or, or worked with clients before. So it's, it's, it's important and affirming for them to, to know that what they're learning at the moment has a, has a real value.
and it's something that can be applied as a, as a real skill. The community here was the first client that I've had, that we've all had. So the supervision or the, or the oversight of, of someone who isn't an architect is a different way of working. To be supervised by someone who doesn't understand when you do a little squiggle on a page and talk about monumentality. Someone who needs a proper rundown of what it is that you intend to actually do. It, it was insightful, probably necessary as well, because that's not how the world works. You can't just say to someone, well, I have this idea, and expect that to be enough. Kilbenny have a very articulate <laughs> Uh, committee and they're well able to tell us what they needed so in that they facilitated that too very much so and we've had several meetings several presentations we talked through things and um, I, th I felt the students got a good uh, grasp. What we did first was we had a design development week which was a week-long process where we deciphered the needs of the community and worked with the community to develop ideas and different projects that could happen. Then after that, we developed some tests and some material and design tests using the actual materials and the actual scale and building it kind of one as to one. And then construction has to start almost immediately then after that because of tight timescales and working in the design build project, the designers then are involved in the actual installation and construction of the pieces. So that, that's, that's always quite good, that the people who are designing it know that it can be built and know how to build it themselves. There's a lot of trust in handing over what they had worked really, really hard for to a bunch of people they didn't really know at that point uh, and didn't probably, you know, had no reason to trust us and say, right, yeah, it's, it's all yours. So the first showing of those uh, drawings and so on, I found them exciting, um, but that's because I didn't read them literally. Um, I, again, I find the community group here far more sophisticated than I gave them credit for. They got concept, they got the idea that this isn't the end product, that this is just a process and that, you know, we're just exploring ideas here. I felt the feedback was incredibly useful and they got to the point and they could see the potential. So in that sense, of all the presentations I've ever made, that one, you came away and you really knew you had a direction after it. So yeah, I found it very useful. I was quite amazed by the maturity of, of the young people, absolutely amazed and uh, how willing they were to get straight straight down to concept and design, willing to get it wrong, but it's only concept stage, you know, and uh, come back and, and run it by the, the people who mattered on committee and that kind of thing, you know. It was really blessed of, of creativity, stuff I would have never have thought of, you know. I could see massive opportunities, you know, massive possibilities from, from that day. Uh, but I suppose number one was to, to achieve the, the two main objectives, that was the staging and uh, the acoustic. I had different set ideas. My big issue with the hall was the acoustics. If there was never a stage in the hall, it wouldn't cast me a thought. I think the acoustics were vitally important in the hall. So my big issue was the acoustics. They put up their various ideas. Um, I had looked at acoustic panels, but what, what they were putting to me that day, I couldn't picture it. Um, so from that point of view, it was very, very different in so much our brain sets are totally different. I had very set views, they had different views. Their views on the designing the stage I thought were excellent, they had great ideas. Um, the, they were planning a route up the mountain, super, all those things. My biggest concern were the acoustics. I just wasn't getting their thoughts. Now since then I have gotten their thoughts and they have been excellent. But it was just... That was my biggest thing. I felt they didn't come across as strong as they could have in the acoustics and selling them to me. That would have been their only weak link I would have seen in their, in their presentation. They could have maybe, maybe approached it a little bit differently. We'll say they would have very, very artistic minds, whereas some of us wouldn't have as artistic a mind. And it's very hard to, to get to visualize these things in your head. So maybe that's something they could take on board if they'd ever do something like this again, or even in their career, giving presentations to maybe come to the normal person's level as opposed to the very artistic person's level. There were some difficulties with some of the plans, and, but these were earned out, all earned out in the day. And I think at the end of that day, 
We left quite happy, and they left quite happy, having made, met what our requirements were, and uh, it fitted in with their plans. They hadn't any difficulty. We were quite pleased. We had a group of 12 or 40 here on the day of the community, and everyone had an input, and we were quite pleased. And we were quite confident at that stage that we had made the right decision to get them in. For them working with us, it was great because everybody was able to contribute something. Um, and everybody did. And it all went into what we designed um, at every step of the way. Everybody kind of had something to, to add to it. And they helped to shed an awful lot of light on, on, on some subjects as well. Connor, for example, who, who took us on walks and stuff and, and taught us about the history of the surrounding area. And even the first week when we stayed in people's houses, that was even a terrific experience. For the first week when they came initially for their planning and their drawing up of scale models, etc., they stayed in four local houses in the community. Two of them stayed with us, uh, Tim and, and Cellini, I can mention names. And uh, very, very fortunate. Tim was a wonderful guitar player and a magnificent cook. And if I may say so, he cooked a beautiful meal for me and a few of my friends. I must say that I've never met as mature a young man in my time for his age, and uh, I'm extremely grateful to him. But that was an experience, you know, that was very positive for me and my, my family and friends, and I'm sure hopefully Tim and Cellini got, got something out of it as well. They came back then for the five, six week period to, to complete the project. They are staying, staying in a local house in the village. We got a house down the street, rent free from Siobhan Clancy, and we got the old creamery as a studio for the lads to do their timber work and all that, and the coating and uh, designing. And of course, they also took over a room at the back of the hall where they, they use it for all their designing. Uh, living in the community has been um, one of the best parts of this project. It's enabled us to get invested in the community centre, to get to know people, to get to form friendships while we are actually working here. And that's made the whole experience an awful lot easier. Um, and it's an awful lot easier to design when you can actually relate to people and their personalities. Becoming part of the community was a new experience to me, especially that it's such a small and close-knit community. Um, yeah, it was maybe a bit too much at times, but it was good fun. Being part of the community here is something that you do without much thought. You integrate very, very quickly into the community. It's not as if you walk into the pub and everybody kind of is looking to see who this new fellow is. Uh, it's more like you walk into the pub and everybody's your friend. Uh, which is great and it's a lovely warm kind of a feeling. Everybody was so kind of welcoming to see us here and integrating into the community was, was really easy because of that I think and I feel like I could, I could nearly live here uh, because of the welcomeness that we've all had and we've all experienced. Community wise I've never, I feel comfortable here and they're a nice bunch, I, I trust them and I think we've developed a trust as well with them. They're always in here with us working. They can be watching and they can be giving a hand or taking part and they can be also seeing the project as it comes together because it's quite important not to land them with a finished project but instead to kind of develop the project that they need. To be able to come in here this evening and uh, relax and see people enjoy the space and uh, get excited by it. And it's nice to see this sort of local event. Design is something that normally resides in cities and you know urban areas and really small local communities don't have much sort of exposure. Um, so it's nice to see an exhibition and this type of uh, an event happening in a, in a small rural community. I feel elated at the end of the project. It's like uh, you're worried going into something like this. It was new. We were convincing people. Most of the time we were convincing ourselves and it surpassed my expectations. So I'm absolutely thrilled, absolutely delighted. And it's good to hear such nice comments from the people that you're doing the work for as well, right? So far it's all been feedback from committee members and everything they've had to say has been good. I think they were a bit unsure along the way of how things will turn out in the end, but I think now we're here and we're finished, they're happy, and uh, for what we've done and what we've given them, I think I'm quite happy with it too. 
The brief they were given originally was to sort the acoustics. That was the original brief. If they could do something with the stage and had time to do something with the stage, they would have looked at the stage. As it stands, we have gotten our stage and we've gotten our acoustics. So they have really, really performed and we have really gotten what we were looking for. We're delighted because we had planned on doing the, the acoustics this year and God knows when the stage would be done. So now we have the acoustics and the stage and the signage done and they gave us great help and advice in, in uh, doing other projects inside and outside. The infrastructure is in place. That in itself was a challenge. From my point of view, that's the easy bit. You know, money will always come from somewhere to do things. That's the easy bit. What do you do next? It will be only limited success, in my view, unless I see fledgling music groups, theatre groups. You know, there are other activities happening. There's dancing and there's continuous use to be made of the hall. But uh, I think that's where the pathway for the future has to be decided, right? What, what can we spark off here? You know, because everything you initiate here, no matter how big or how small it is, it's a new venture for your community and small communities need that badly. You know, uh, you can't let other people dictate what you're going to do into the future. You have to have a big say in yourself. And having the infrastructure here, you have part one of the plan. The part two is to get, get the people in with the, the resolve and the vision. You know, what, what can we, what can we uh, trigger off here? What can we start? Looking at the changes, we'll say the acoustics and the stage, it means that we would be able to provide a better service for little plays, shows, little theatre events. Since the students have come on board one evening here, they put on a film outside, they projected it onto the back wall of the hall. So that's another thing we can look at in the hall, is to actually start showing films maybe very, very old films and have kind of a social night out of it. Um, that's one aspect. Um, I would hope that we can continue certain ideas that the students have come to us with. Maybe the first day of their presentation, they had a lot of ideas. They haven't had time to see them through. I'm hoping that we'll be able to take those ideas and maybe next year get a group or even just do it ourselves and take some of their ideas to the next level. The community, be, they seem very proud of it, proud that they took a chance on it, proud that they kind of pursued it and, you know, they're that type of a group. They won't rest on their laurels, they won't just say, oh yes, we've this done, let's sit back and enjoy it. They'll be moving on to the next project, I've no doubt about that. I really hope that what we've built will last and will have an impact on the generation that is now and the generation that is to come and maybe even more than that um, and I think it will. I think we've built something that's quite solid and it will affect the community in, in ways that we don't even know yet and I think that's, that's really powerful. That's a really nice thing to have been able to do for the summer. How will it affect the community? I'm, I'm not sure how it will actually do that but I hope that it will be really, really positive. I've thrown myself into it and I've enjoyed it immensely. Um, my family are probably just, you know, I'll have to reintroduce myself to them because they just haven't seen me in six weeks. Personally, I just found it really fulfilling. This is something I think I'd love to do. I, I think it's because it, it brings together everything I've done so far. If you, there's a bit of teaching, there's a bit of building, there's a bit of designing and so it's actually really, I feel it's a really good fit for me personally. Uh, but you'd need oceans of energy <laughs> to keep this going. And I think I've learned a lot from it. So personally, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. To take away from this is, well, there's a ton of skills I've learned in the uh, practical side of things, physically building things. Um, but then I guess the work that goes behind that is, so from a drawing stage, which I would have completed all my work in college prior to, and then presented and finished. There's a bit between to go from drawing to finalised, all those tiny little nitty gritty details um, which we've had to do here because we've had to finalise things, we've had to have them built. Um, and I think it's just given me a greater appreciation for, I guess, the finer detailed work. There's something very, very energetic about um, seeing something actually come to life, which is very pleasurable. Having the actual experience of getting past just the drawing to the sizing and the ordering and the pricing and, and exact details and stuff like that. So, and then actually going and building it, right? I'll take away a different perspective on what architecture can be. 
It doesn't need to be a pristine glass or it doesn't need to be an esoteric thing for only rich people. But I kind of knew that anyway, and that's the direction I was going with my final projects in college. But to do it and to live it, I suppose, because we've been here for quite a while, just making and designing and speaking and interacting with the community. It does give you an idea that design can be for everyone. It shouldn't be limited to, to just the people who pay, in some cases, through the nose for it. And it's very rewarding to do that for people who don't have access to architecture in the traditional sense, if that's a thing. It allowed me to really think about what architecture can be and what it's for. I would like to see that the, this is an opportunity for architecture to kind of come out of the ivory tower a little bit and, and, and really work with the people that need it.